Today I'm going to demonstrate a few ways scientists can test for the presence of different types of molecules in food, specifically starches, proteins, sugars, and lipids. To that end, the first thing I needed to do was to make a solution that can detect the presence of proteins, and the easiest is the Bayeret reagent. To make this reagent, I first dissolved 2 grams of copper sulfate pentahydrate and 8 grams of sodium tartrate tetrahydrate in 200 milliliters of distilled water. In a separate beaker, I then dissolved 8 grams of sodium hydroxide and another 200 milliliters of water, which I then slowly added to the blue solution of copper sulfate and sodium tartrate. This resulted in the whole solution turning a very deep, gorgeous blue. And once the addition was complete, I passed this all through a coffee filter to remove anything that didn't dissolve. This process is extremely similar to making Benedict's reagent, and the only real difference is that in Benedict's reagent, sodium carbonate is used instead of hydroxide, and sodium citrate is used instead of the tartrate. In either case, the tartrate is added to form a complex with the copper that prevents it from precipitating as it's hydroxide in the alkaline solution. Once this is mixed for a minute, it's ready to use, and to make sure it works, I decided to test it on some egg white. I did this first with straight egg white, and then again with 1 milliliter of egg white dissolved in 200 milliliters of water to see if it could still detect protein at such a low concentration. In both cases, the addition of the Bayeret reagent to the protein sample resulted in a gorgeous violet color, which was actually quite difficult to see on camera in the dilute sample. This color is the result of a two-step reaction wherein copper first binds to the nitrogen present in the peptides of proteins and is then reduced to its plus one state where it forms the purple complex. This complex absorbs at 540 nanometers, and the intensity of the absorption is directly proportional to protein concentration in accordance with the Beer-Lambert law, making this a very useful chemical to quantify protein concentration with the aid of a UV-Vis spectrophotometer. The only little caveat here is that a variety of chemicals interfere with this reaction, such as tris and ammonium buffers, thiols, wheat proteins, sulfate, and certain artificial coloring agents. That said, this test is best used on raw, whole protein samples, but I'm still hoping it'll work for my project here today. For my second reagent, I need something that can test for the presence of starches, and by far the best is something called Lugol's iodine. To make this solution, I first dissolve 5 grams of potassium iodide in 50 milliliters of water. Once the potassium iodide had completely dissolved, I then added 2.5 grams of elemental iodine and gently heated the solution until it all dissolved as well. This produces a solution where the reactive triiodide ion dominates in equilibrium with free iodine, which makes this solution incredibly useful in various medical applications. However, the way this solution works for my applications here today is that when triiodide reacts with starch, it forms a very, very dark blue complex. This complex does not form, however, if only iodine or iodide is present, which is the basis for ideometric titration and the briggs rauscher oscillating reaction. This principle is also used to detect counterfeit currency as US dollars do not contain starch, while most regular paper does. Because of this, a triiodide containing ink will make a dark blue mark on fake money, but a light yellow mark on real money. Anyway, this reaction is quite sensitive so long as the pH doesn't drop so low that the starch hydrolyzes, and once the iodine had completely dissolved, this reagent is complete, and I set it aside as well. To test for the presence of reducing sugars like glucose or fructose, I'm simply using some Benedict's reagent that I made in a previous video. I'll be sure to include a link to that video in the description. And to test for lipids, I'm simply using some Sudan 3 dye dissolved in absolute ethanol. Now that I had gathered all of my analytical reagents, it was time to analyze some food. And the food I decided to test consists of a few items I picked up at McDonald's. Here I've got some fries, some chicken nuggets, a basic hamburger, and some sweet and sour sauce I got with the nuggets. The first thing I want to do is blend each of these items separately in some water to try and get a somewhat homogenous slurry. I started with the chicken nuggets, to which I added a bit of sodium chloride to help salt in some of the protein, which is a step I skipped when I blended the burger, as I figured they both already probably contained enough salt to suspend a somewhat decent amount of protein. Skipping this step for the burger, though, might have been a bad idea, and I'm not actually sure. 
Also, I didn't bother blending the dipping sauce, and instead I just diluted it with some distilled water. In any case, once all the food items had been thoroughly blended and transferred to a few beakers, I decided to start with the Lugol's test for starch. To do this, I began by pipetting some of each sample into four respective test tubes. None of these food slurries were in any way really homogenous, and tended to clog the pipettes to the point that eventually, I just started pouring them into the test tubes. A fifth test tube was filled with distilled water to act as a control. Once this was done, I then simply added a few drops of Lugol's iodine to each solution and watched for a color change. When I added the triiodide solution to the chicken nuggets, there was an immediate and distinct darkening indicating a positive test for starch, which probably comes from the breading. The fries had the most clearly positive result, as potatoes are mostly starch and water. The test on the burger was also clearly positive, along with the sauce. I can't really explain why the burger contains starches unless they use potato buns, but the sauce probably tested positive because starch is often used as a thickening agent in sauces that aren't particularly thick on their own. And with that, the first test was concluded, with all four McDonald's items unquestionably testing positive for starch. For the second test, I decided to use my Bayourette reagent to test for protein. When added to the chicken nuggets, the solution turned a distinct, albeit fairly faint violet, meaning this sample was positive for protein. Obviously. However, the color was a lot more faint than I'd expect, considering these nuggets are mostly protein, hopefully. And as I said earlier, any additive chemicals could interfere with this test, as could the cooking process itself in denaturing proteins and rendering them less soluble. Regardless, it was definitely a positive result qualitatively, just maybe not quantitatively. The fries clearly tested negative for protein, as did the sauce, but the burger was really tough to read. To try and get a clearer result, I added a small amount of sodium chloride to the samples here, sonicated them in hot water at 55 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes, and then centrifuge to try and force all the sediment that was obstructing my view to the bottom. I then tested them again, which gave me an even clearer result for the chicken nuggets, but the burger sample was so faint I'm really not sure whether I'd call this positive. This inconclusive result could be due to a variety of factors. Possibly one is that there's so many added chemicals here from the mass-produced food item containing several ingredients, that the Bayourette test was simply too interfered with to really work. A second possibility is that the burger was so absolutely overcooked and overprocessed that the proteins denatured to the point of being virtually insoluble, and this is what I suspect to be the case. A third option is that the burger didn't contain any meat, which um, it's McDonald's, so that's a distinct possibility as well. Now, one thing I could have done here is added a bit of ammonium molybdate to the Bayourette reagent prior to testing. This enormously increases the sensitivity of the test, making it more useful as a qualitative test, but less useful quantitatively. This works because copper-1 ions can actually reduce molybdenum-6 ions to form the extremely strongly colored molybdenum blue, which is very visible even at low concentrations. Anyway, moving on to testing for lipids, this is one that could honestly have been skipped given this is one of the most wretchedly and disgustingly oily foods I've ever had the misfortune to consume, and I strongly advise against doing so. It's outrageous what they charge for this garbage. Regardless, to test for lipids, I simply add a bit of this Sudan 3 ethanol solution to my samples and give them a vigorous shake. The ethanol will form an emulsion with the oils in the samples, which can be seen near the top. Ethanol can actually be used here alone, but Sudan 3 is a strong red color that's only soluble in nonpolar compounds like lipids and helps to increase the sensitivity of the test. Here it's very clear that the fries, burger, and nuggets all contained lipids or oils. The sauce was actually negative here, but it could be that the sauce itself already contains an emulsified oil, which this test wouldn't be able to detect. There are other tests for lipids, but none to my knowledge are particularly as vivid and distinct as these other tests. Now, moving on to my final test, it was time to test for sugar. And this is done using Benedict's reagent and works much in the same way as the Bayourette reagent, except that the samples here have to be heated to get a result. 
To that end, I added Benedict's reagent to all my samples and then put them in a beaker of water that I heated on my hot plate until eventually I got a color change. This test is also somewhat quantitative as the color of the reducing solution will go from yellow to orange and finally to red as the concentration of reducing sugars increases. Based on this test, the sauce very obviously is absolutely loaded in sugar. And given the intensity of the result after being diluted, I'd say that it's very likely high fructose corn syrup. The burger also tested strongly positive for reducing sugar, and I'm not sure what this could be, but my best guess is that they must put a lot of sugar in their buns. The nuggets and fries tested negative for reducing sugar, which I was relieved to see. As a side note, this test only works for reducing sugars like glucose or fructose but sugars like sucrose can be determined as well by gently heating the sample in a weakly acidic solution to hydrolyze the disaccharide to its monomers. So yeah, that's just a few of the most straightforward ways you can test the chemical composition of different foods in the lab. There are numerous other methods, so feel free to leave a comment if you'd like to see some of the others. Anyway, that's all I got for today. I hope you found this interesting, and as always, I want to thank all my incredible patrons for their generous contributions. Your support is vital and very appreciated. To everyone else, if you'd like to see more content like this, consider subscribing on TikTok or YouTube, or even by becoming a patron yourself. In general, I'm trying to become more active on Patreon. At first, I kind of just treated it as a way for anybody who wanted to, you know, throw me some spare change to do so. But there's enough people there who want more engagement that I want to engage with it more, and um, I'm trying my best. That said, if you're an existing patron or thinking of becoming one, let me know in the comments anything you'd like me to maybe offer um, as a benefit or anything you'd like to see, and I'll try my best to implement it. In any case, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.